guys. I bet you thought Andy is not doing any videos anymore. Well guys, I'm busy. I'm busy. Okay, so with this video tonight, I just want to give you a quick update. Did I say this night? I actually filmed some of the videos this morning already, but wanted to wait until the end of the day to give you an update on the Mitsubishi battery degradation software issue situation. Let me just rewind the day for you and start this morning when I filmed the first part of this video. Before we get started, welcome to another episode of Unplugged TV Australia. Sunny hot, 39 degrees today. And no, this is not the video you're all waiting for. I'm not revealing any groundbreaking new inventions and solutions for this whole battery issue with Mitsubishi. But, but um, first of all, let me address some of your comments on my videos. Um, quite a few people have mentioned that um, the dog is not correct what is showing and the dog may calculate things wrong and showing the wrong figures and numbers and may miscalculate some other stuff, whatever. As I have replied to, I just want to make something very clear. The dog is the PHEV watchdog app is not calculating anything. The figures we see on the screen are the figures which coming from the car, from the CAN bus system of the car. And all these numbers and figures are coming from the BMS. And the dog is just a display of these numbers. It only shows us what is already in the car. It does not modify or calculate nothing of the important numbers. The only thing the dog calculates is the conversion of kilometers to miles and LBS to torque, whatever, Newton meters and all this kind of stuff, you know, liters to uh, gallons and all this. So this is, this is the only stuff the dog actually calculates. Everything else from the state of health from the percentage, from the state of charge, from the ampere hours, all this is coming directly from the car. Anyway, so the dog only shows what's already in the car. And many, many, many people have confirmed this already with their dealerships, that the dog shows exactly the same figures as on the original dealer's diagnostic tool on the MAT3 device. It always shows the same numbers as the dog shows because both of these devices, so the MAT device and the dog, showing the numbers and figures coming out of the ECU of the car. So guys, and even if you mention this again and again and again, it won't make a difference. Fact is, the dog is not calculating any important numbers and figures on the screen. Okay, so this out of the way, the second point I want to mention today is, well, um, let's go back to my lunch break. Well, and then I've got some other comments saying, Andy, you're doing it wrong. You charge your car to 100% all the time. You should not do this. And you discharge the car to 0% and you should not do this. It's not good for the battery. It increases battery degradation and all this kind of stuff. Guys, if you write such things, you need to be informed. You need to inform yourself, you need to Google if you don't have the PHEV yourself. You need to find out what's actually going on. If the PHEV charges to 100%, this is only what the battery gauge shows you. This is not 100% in real world. There's a top buffer of about 10 to 15%. So the battery charges only to 4.1 volts instead of 4.2. 4.2 would be 100%, 4.1 is about 85 to 90% only. When we fully charge the car, it's only at 85 or 90% state of charge, so it can be plugged in all the time without damaging the battery. And the same with the bottom buffer. If the engine kicks in, we still have a 30% bottom buffer capacity, which is not accessible while driving. And this is mainly there to protect the battery from deep cycle, of course, and also gives you a buffer if you tow a caravan or something with a car. It gives you a little bit more energy boost when you go uphill, for example. But under normal driving conditions, these 30% are not um, accessible. So we've got 10-15% at the top and 30% at the bottom. 
So guys, and if you are new to the PHEV technology, welcome to the channel. Please click the subscribe button, it's free. You now know, so the battery does not get fully charged and it does not get fully discharged. Okay guys, so now we come to the main part of this video. Probably not the video you all have waited for. I'm not revealing any groundbreaking innovations or solutions. Well, let me tell you um, a little bit of background information, what I can share. The last car last week, which got the new battery on Thursday, this member of our team is still down in Adelaide at the headquarter of Mitsubishi Australia. After he got the battery replaced on Thursday, he experienced the same degradation as we all did. So a constant degradation every time he turned on the car, the battery went down 0.1 ampere hour and he lost about um, two, two and a half percent over the weekend. So of course he got back to Mitsubishi on Mondays and they got the car back into the workshop to do more testing. What happened yesterday as well is the member who got the car, who got the battery replaced in his car the first here in Australia, which is now four or five weeks ago. He um, actually explained what has happened. He put some very useful information into the forum yesterday. He told us that he is working with software and coding and programming for the last 40 years. He explained it in all details, which I'm not gonna repeat now because it's a fairly long thing and I wanna keep this one short here. And it now makes sense, it makes sense. I read it a couple of times and, and followed it with my, and it totally makes sense. And this is probably the problem we are dealing with in terms of the battery situation with Mitsubishi. As I said before, the car from last week went back into the workshop and they are still testing and investigating what is going on. I was hoping I'm getting an update during the day and I could actually inform you what is going on and if we have succeeded with the new method. But there was no update from Mitsubishi. So obviously it takes longer. <laughs> I mean, come on guys, we don't wanna expect uh, just a solution for this whole for this whole problem within one working business day. So it may take a little bit longer to actually find the cure. I call it the cure. That is what Mitsubishi needs. They need a cure. They don't need bandages anymore. They don't need quick fixes anymore. They need a cure for this whole problem. So, and, and we are not there yet at the moment. And I guess if this works on this car, we will see all the other cars going back into the workshop as well, getting the same repair and fix. And then we will see if this works on multiple cars where the battery got replaced in the last couple of weeks. So this is the situation at the moment. Okay guys, as soon as, uh, as we get response from Adelaide in South Australia, I will inform you straight away on this channel here what is going on with the battery, what is going on with the fix, the cure, we call it the cure, hashtag PHEV cure. And I hope for all of us, we will have this sorted and fixed over the next couple of days. So fingers crossed, if it really takes one of their customers to find out what is wrong with the car, with the battery, with the software. And, and to be honest, I cannot imagine that this is the fix, but it makes so much sense. And we just have to wait to, for, for Mitsubishi to confirm this is working now or not. Okay guys, so far this little update here. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia, signing off. You stay charged and we will see us soon in the next video. Okay, see you then. Bye bye.